Ray for the winner of the Queen Elizabeth competition. How did you feel at the final stage? Being locked away, having your cell phone and your all communication devices taken away, very, very difficult. Classical music is not just one image. It certainly needs to show all sides, right? I just want to do something that, like... 안녕하세요. 저는 플루티스트 최나경입니다. <웃음> 오늘 이 자리에 정말 스페셜한 음악가 한 명을 모시게 되었는데요. 스타 바이올리니스트 레이 첸을 모셨습니다. <웃음> <웃음> 안녕하세요. <laughs> it's our first time seeing each other in Korea. Yeah, that's right. And you come to Korea quite often. Oh, I think it's yeah. I think it's definitely I love Korea, you know, and I love right answer. <laughs> Korean people, I love Korean food. Yes. I feel like it's very very homey, you know. I feel like Korean people are also very very passionate. They're great storytellers and they're very creative as well. I really admire that. I get a lot of inspiration from that. That's good to hear. A lot of you know Ray for the winner of the Queen Elizabeth competition. That was already hmm, 10 years ago? Uh, yep, uh, without uh, revealing age, it's, uh, yeah, it was back in 2009. I, yeah, I remember you preparing for this competition. Oh, I have to practice, you know, this big competition coming up and so. And That's right. You came home with the prize. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was a really difficult uh, achievement at the time, but then I realized shortly after that, you know, it was like the highest achievement as a student because I was still in, at Curtis and then suddenly it felt like but then also the beginning, you know, of a professional career, which then I realized, oh, wow, it's, it's just starting now. I, it's, you know, winning the competition and now, and now all this new level of, of, of achievements that have to be done. Right. You probably get this question a lot, but uh, how did you feel uh, on stage at the final stage? Oh, I was just so happy to be there and I was so happy that I had made it that far. You know, it's, it's the Queen Elizabeth goes back for us violinists especially. It goes back until, you know, David Oistrakh mm -hmm. uh, first winning it. And, and it has a long history, it has a long heritage. And so for me, you know, especially being able to be as, as a laureate, as a finalist, one of the 12, and having that experience of especially of like being locked away for a week, having your, you know, cell phone and your all communication devices taken away, to learn the new piece, yeah. Actually, it was a Korean composer in Hwa Cho that, that year that wrote a piece especially for the finalists to, to have to learn. It was very, very difficult. Plus the concerto that I played Tchaikovsky. I was already very happy that I finally got to be there and each round felt like a new experience. I didn't have so much uh, performance experience before, especially with orchestra, right? So each round it was like, wow, a unique, a new opportunity. And since then on, I think around this time you started putting this comedy videos oh. on classical music. You know, nowadays we do this short videos for the social medias, but it was all, all before everyone was doing it. You started putting in this very short, like 30 second videos. Ah, so ready to practice. 12 seconds later. 
you, you made us laugh so hard and we connected with you so well. So how did you come up with this idea? Social media wasn't the same as it is now. And back then, classical music still hadn't fully embraced as an industry social media and allowing people to view the backstage, so to speak, of the musician life. It was still a new idea at the time to be able to show this backstage. And so that's what I wanted to do. I felt like, and, and you know how it is between our colleagues. Like, our colleagues are very funny. Musicians are funny people, but we- People well, don't know it. Right, exactly, because when we're on stage, we're presenting classical music, we're presenting Beethoven, we're presenting Mozart and Mendelssohn and all these different composers. We are then on stage just just kind of like the interpreter, right? The, we're, we're sort of the best artist is like when you only just sprinkle your own artistry and then you let the composer shine. That's what we consider true artistry. So I just want to do something that like, I want to tell a story. I want to like tell the, the world who I am. I'm more than just a competition winner. I wanted to show people like who I was. And then if they would embrace that, then I felt like they could, they might, I don't know, who knows, might like my music more. By the way, uh, these days you see some YouTube channels like Tomo or Tuset, and sometimes your channel as well. We can easily see that classical music can be also fun. Personally, I am very positive about this direction. What are your thoughts about this? Oh, I think that it's, it's really great. I mean, classical music is not just one image. It certainly needs to show all sides, right? There are multiple facets to it. It's, it's just like a person, right? You have multiple different sides of your personality. Right, we're, we're not always serious. We're also human. Yeah. You know, we make jokes too, and we go through practice sessions and some funny, <laughs> funny times as well. Especially nowadays, people want to know and relate more to what's happening on stage. I think changes, right, with, with the different ages. Let's say I like to give the example of, of, of 007, James Bond, right? It's a character that has been, you know, throughout the ages, but each remake, it's set in the current times, right? The jokes change. The jokes that would have been appropriate, like, you know, 60 years ago are no longer appropriate in, in current days and times. And, and that's the way we need to also look at classical music as well. And so I think that like for these types of new directions, I, I always think that it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I think this is, it's wonderful that what you're doing, what Domo is doing, and um, let's make classical music more fun, right? Yeah, more fun, <laughs> more accessible, and more relatable. Yeah. And recently, you even created this app called Tonic. Yes. I had this privilege of joining this Tonic app as a, how would you say? Uh, well, you've done so much for us as a special guest, as an educator, as a mentor. It's basically something that came from a desire to, again, connect with people, connect with musicians and like music lovers around the world and to find something that we all had in common, right? Like, I mean, everyone has to practice to be a musician, right? Like, but everyone's gone through that feeling of that loneliness when you're practicing by yourself and, and the kind of procrastination, the, the hard to find motivation aspect. It's kind of like practicing for my mom in the kitchen. Just knowing that she was there listening, mm -hmm. it made me feel like, hey, I have a purpose. Like, of course, I always had my goals of, you know, wanting to learn this piece or go to this competition or, you know, become a great musician or something like that. But for today, my goal of just unpacking the case and practicing, that required something much more immediate. This is sort of like that, the same feeling as going to the gym together with somebody or going mm -hmm. to the library together to study. It's like that yeah. motivation practicing together. Right. And what I also admire you about, among many things, <laughs> is that I know you're always doing something, you're always busy, I'm pretty sure you have no moment that you're bored. <laughs> I try not to be, I try to stay inspired, yeah, I try to keep learning. Speaking of that, can you reveal us your future Projects just to us. Oh, oh <laughs> future projects. Well, I think thinking more about different ways in which I can 
um, sort of positively impact. I think that that's like the way of, of, of measuring success, like multiple ways of doing that, right? Achieving that you could play a concert, you could, um, which, you know, to a thousand, two thousand people and, and impact them, right? Give them like this experience. You could also be doing it through master classes, through education, through videos, kind of like what we're doing now. I mean, and, and there's many, many ways. So, so it's always just thinking about different ways. Uh, recording. Um, I know you've done all in one uh, CD all by yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was during the pandemic. Yeah, Ooh, it was a special time. And at the same time, you were making the vlog out of it. <laughs> Today I'm going to make an album. The microphones are supposed to connect to the back. So how this is going to work is Jonathan, my producer, who's currently based in London, is going to be remotely controlling the software. Well, I wanted to document it, you know? I, 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 felt, I thought to myself, how many times as a musician, like, are we going to be able to have this opportunity? I always try to see, like, as an opportunity, right? St starting from, let's say, the pandemic, you know? Of course, you know, many people you know, ourselves included, we, we, you know, my family lost like loved ones as well. But like in terms of like for yourself and let's say you're healthy, even if your life stops, it's an opportunity, right? You have to reassess. It's an opportunity to take that time for yourself. It's an opportunity to take a look at what you've been doing so far. Life will continue afterwards, but do you want it to be the same? From the smallest things in your life to the biggest things, I, I felt like that kind of an attitude has really helped me. Yeah, that was a special time. <laughs> yeah. 여러분 오늘 어, 제 친구 레이첸과의 대화 즐겁게 봐주셨길 바라고요. Any comments you want to add to the Korean fans or international fans? <laughs> well, um, I just want to say thank you to you all for 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 watching this video. So it's something that I really truly believe in um, that is going to make I think the music world a better place. And so. Um, thanks for having me here and thanks for your time as well, Jasmine, oh, because I know you're coming. an extremely busy person uh, <laughs> and, uh, and a big star, um, especially here in Korea. So many people lining up to, to meet you. So We'll cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you as well. And thank I you always for appreciate being here. Your... It was a yeah. great time. And see you next time. Yeah. And now we'll go eat. <laughs> All right, let's go eat. <laughs> 구독 <웃음> 부탁합니다. 감사합니다.